your grade sevens, Helen here, and that means it's time for your natural sciences lesson. We're dealing with energy transfers at the moment, and we've been learning about Sankey diagrams, and today you're going to learn how to draw those diagrams. So this is quite a lot of fun because you've been analyzing already drawn Sankey diagrams, and remember, our Sankey diagrams show us input energy and show us output energy. And we know that the input must equal the output energy. And we also know that Sankey diagrams show our output energy both as useful energy, in other words, what the system was designed to do, as well as our wasted energy. And in our last lesson, we compared a filament light bulb with an energy saver and we saw that the system that was more efficient was the light saver energy, uh, the light, not light saver, the energy saver light bulb. So this is the information that Sankey diagrams can give us. We know that the arrows are going to indicate the direction of energy transfer and that the width of the arrow is going to be proportional to the amount of energy. So our heat energy that was at 90 joules has a wide arrow and our heat energy that was down at 25 joules has a much narrower arrow. So how do we draw these diagrams? So what you need in order to draw a Sankey diagram, it's much easier if you use graph paper or ordinary square or quad paper. The squares or the tiny squares and the big squares in the graph paper are going to help us work out those percentages uh, far easier. And it's going to help give us a guide to how wide those arrows should be. We also need a pencil, a ruler, and in this case, it's quite nice to have colored pencils in order to distinguish between the input energy and the output energies. It just makes your diagram a lot clearer. So we're going to draw a Sankey diagram for this torch. Let's read about what the specifications are in terms of energy transfers with the torch. An LED D light bulb. Now an LED light bulb is supposed to be quite energy efficient. We're going to see if it is. It's used in a torch. It requires a small energy input of only 10 joules. It produces 8 joules of useful energy in the form of light. But no system is 100% efficient. The remaining 2 joules are lost as heat energy. So even though we've got what appears to be quite an energy efficient system, it's not 100% energy efficient. Draw a Sankey diagram to represent the energy transfers. Now what I like to do when I get a problem like this is you must read the information very clearly. And then out of the big paragraph of information, I like to extract the information that is going to help me draw the diagram. And here is our uh, extracted information that is useful. The input energy and the value of the input energy. Then the output energy that's useful and the output energy that is not useful. So now I've got my three values and I know which are input, which are output and which are useful and which are wasted. Now I am ready to start drawing my diagram. So here is my extracted information, input energy, 
10 joules. Output energy is made up of the useful energy, which is the light, 8 joules, plus the wasted energy, which is the heat at 2 joules. I can now look at my extracted energy and check before I start drawing my diagram that it obeys the law of conservation of energy. Remember, my input energy, 10 joules, must equal my useful output, 8 joules, plus my wasted energy, 2 joules. Once I've checked, yes, 8 plus 2 equals 10, I know that my values are sound. If I didn't get an equation here, I need to look for the lost energy. Now, I'm going to count my squares and I'm going to make a box and it's very nice and easy. If I've got 10 joules, I'm going to make a, a scale here of one block for one. One block is going to mean one joule. So let's count it. We know that we show our input energy on the left hand side and one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten blocks. That is now going to represent our ten joules for our input energy. The height of the box represents the amount of energy that is put in. If one block equals one joule, ten blocks will equal ten joules. And I think it's a nice idea if you shade it in in one particular color. Now you know that your input energy is in blue and it is scaled to the height of 10 blocks. How long do you make it? It doesn't really matter. The length of it is not important. It's the height or the width of the block that is important. Our next step is to start showing the output energy. So here's our input energy. And remember, it's going to be our 10 blocks high to show 10 joules. We start with the output energy, which counts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, eight blocks, which represents eight joules. And we'll just extend it a little bit along. And now we've accounted for the amount of useful energy. We've still got to account for this wasted energy. So what we're going to do is we say two joules, one, two blocks is going to represent the wasted energy. But because we want to show our Sankey diagrams as having inputs going through to useful outputs and wasted energy outputs, we're going to rotate this last block and face it downwards to show that it is wasted energy. Notice that we've colored in our output energy in two different colors one color for the useful and one color for the wasted. Remember that we can also write on here that this is 10 joules of useful, this is 8 joules, sorry, 10 joules of input, 8 joules of useful, and 2 joules of wasted energy. Now we're going to rotate those two blocks to represent our two joules and Finally, we're going to add our arrows, right? We're going to add our arrows because the arrows are important as well. Remember all the things that the Sankey diagram show us, the input energy, and we illustrate that as being 10 joules, a slightly narrower box to show us, or arrow to show us the useful output, and it's in the same proportion as our input energy, which was 10. Our output energy of the useful kind is 8 
jewels. So we counted up eight blocks. And the remaining two blocks are for the wasted energy, but instead of drawing them over here, we rotate them so that we can show our wasted energy output is two joules. And we've put the arrows on them to show the direction in which the energy transfers are taking place. And labels are very important on this Sankey diagram. Now you can take any appliance and any problem in this way and you can draw on your square diagram or square paper you can draw one of these diagrams. You'll see that our arrows don't have nice rounded shapes. Those arrows are drawn with the computer. We just need to see the important things of the percentages of useful to wasted energy and the amount of input energy. It doesn't matter that our diagrams don't have beautiful twists and turns and lovely curves on them. This Sankey diagram that is drawn with sharp angles is perfect and it is very, very accurate. So let's go over what makes a good Sankey diagram. What would get you lots of marks in a test, for example? Well, we must first of all make sure that our diagram is neat, right? Straight lines drawn with a ruler. As soon as you start drawing without a ruler, your lines start wobbling and it doesn't look as neat. To make it even more meaningful, I like to use a little bit of color. And it does split up our diagram nice and clearly into the input and the two forms of output energy. But the color is not essential. You don't have to put the color in. And particularly if you are writing a test and you're running out of time, don't worry about putting some color in as long as you keep it nice and neat with your pencil and with your ruler. What else makes this a good diagram? We must label our arrows with input and output energy. And very important that we use arrows because the arrows show the direction of the energy transfer. We must label the input energy and we must label our output energy and we must show what energy is regarded as the input in terms of either a percentage or in joules or if it's a very large amount in kilojoules. Here are useful output energy. Light energy is labeled at 8 joules and our heat energy, which is the wasted energy, is labeled as 2 joules. You can put the label behind the arrow or you could put the label up on the arrow as long as we can see, very importantly, the width of our arrows because the two very important things about Zanke diagrams is the direction of energy, the way in which energy is being transferred from where to where. Another important thing is the width of the arrow gives us an indication of the amount of energy. And so simply looking at this energy diagram, we can start analyzing the efficiency of our LED light bulb. So remember, we've already determined that filament light bulbs are not very energy efficient. We've also determined that energy saver light bulbs are much more efficient. And now we see that an LED is very efficient. We have 80% of our energy being useful energy and only 20% of our energy being wasted. But if you can design that torch that brings wasted energy down to 2%, you will make a lot of money. So there are lots of careers out there in terms of energy efficiency. But that's it for today. I will catch up with you next time. Goodbye.